Hello and welcome to the last game of the day. It's gonna be IC Cup taking on Natural 9 for the Star Ladder qualifiers for that one slot that is open in Star Series. That one slot that 16 teams are fighting for, or I should say have fought for, because there's a lot of teams that have already dropped off. Now we already know which team will be um, the one that's already in the finals. It's a double elimination bracket. Best out of ones only, apart from the finals, which are best out of three. But we know already that, spoiler alert, I will move my mouse violently when the spoiler alert is over. So mute your mouse, my, my, you mute your stream right now if you don't want to get spoiled. With three, two, one. The winner of the, uh, of the, or the one that's already inside that final spot is Power Rangers. So that's my spoiler over. Moving the mouse violently. Oh, there we go. That's the move mouse violently. It was on the wrong screen. <laughs> Anyways, um... We're going to see which one of these two teams is going to be moving on to the loser's bracket small finals. And that's going to be happening tomorrow at 5. So like I said, this is the last game of the day. There's two games open at the same time on the other stream. You, uh, the other stream being for Suda, so it will be Russian. But you can find there um, GTM taking on U-Boat. So you can check that out if you want to. We are going to watch IC Cup vs Natural 9. And this is on the US East server, If you're in case you're wondering. Uh, we have got the Undying Ban out together with the Bat Rider and the Nyx Assassin and the Keeper of Light. With the Darkseer being the first pick up for IC Cup, there was, by the way, a coin toss to decide who went where and such. So we have got first pick Dire and Natural 9 on the Radiant side. We're going to see uh, what Natural 9 is going to be picking up first. As, uh, well, everything's still open up for grabs. We see, we did see them going with the same sort of lineup twice in a row now already. Uh, going with that anti-mage. Um, just wanting to have that time to farm up. Now we've seen them win one with that and lose one with that. That's the loss, of course, that got them into the loser's bracket. That we saw them win from, uh, from a different team. And we're going to see if they are going to be able to... Keep themselves into the loser bracket this time because this this is the real thing. If you die here, die here. You know, if you lose here, rather, you're out. No comebacks, no star ladder for you. So that's gonna be uh, something that you're gonna have to live with. And we're gonna see Nitro 9, of course, putting everything to everything to try and win this game. At the same time, I seek up. Same story for them. And once again, we're gonna see an anti mage for Nitro 9. They pick it up very early, I have to say. I mean, anti mage is not a hero that you see that often lately and oh my god this is gonna be a tough game for natural Knight to take because we're gonna see a phantom that's a shadow demon combination two things um shadow demon is great against the anti-mage because are in lane at least for uh, well later on as well uh, you get of course anti-mage illusions from that disruption and you will be able to burn his own mana so that he can't link away second you can disrupt the phantom lancer and at later game that will mean that the illusions that the, that the shadow demon makes can also make their own illusions of the phantom lancer so you have more phantom lancers illusions <laughs> Um, yeah, that is gonna be uh, pretty damn painful, but at the same time, it should be Antimage that is ready faster than the Phantom Lancer to help. Though the pushing potential of Phantom Lancer is a bit harder than the pushing potential of the Antimage, but there's so many different situations that can be happening. It will depend greatly on laning, by the way. If someone is getting a head start on the lane, it will, it will go a long way. And one thing has to be said, be prepared for a fairly long game because these two heroes are known as late game carries. We have to first get to late game to see them prove themselves. And I think both of these are quite confident that they can be able to can be proven themselves and they can be getting that pla to that place to that late game. Depending on how fast, of course, they farm. We have got the uh, Chen Bean banned out now. We have got the Queen of Pain picked up by Natural Knight, so they've got themselves a mid lane hero. Uh, they've got the Rubik already as a support for the Anti-Mage. In theory, there's still place for that jungle hero. Now we have seen them picking up the Nature's Prophet two times in that jungle. Played by Godot. We might see them do that again and just have the Rubik with the Anti-Mage and the Queen of Pain mid and some safe offlane elsewhere. As we do have the Puck now being banned out. I see Cup. They have got the Darkseer. Could be going towards that offlane. Phantom Lancer together with the Shadow Demon on the uh, safe lane. Something mid. It's all possible. And with something mid, I kind of mean, um, I kind of mean, um, just a mid hero, that is. We do have a Nature's Prophet being banned out though, so Icy Cup coming prepared, knowing what they should be banning out. Godot not going to be able to play his, uh, Nature's Prophet. We have got a Lashrek banned out there as well, of course that's a great hero to have in combination with the Shadow Demon of Stun, which is something that is very, very of course dangerous for that anti-mage, because he has got that slight animation before he, before he blinks. He needs to be able to get this blink actually off before he actually blinks, if that made sense. Uh, the spell point is, uh, is is quite 
long, which makes sure that if Lashrak lands the, the uh, stun perfectly with the Shadow Demon, he can't link away and he might actually die, which is not something that you want to be seeing as the anti mage. And even, I mean, even if he doesn't die, he'll be mana burned from his own illusions but th during that stun so that he can't blink away and might still die afterwards. So, you know. Another jungle hero being banned out, it is the Enchantress, leaving the Enigma as the sole jungle hero that is actually decent in the jungle. Uh, in there, of course, there there is there is uh, there has been experiments with different heroes and the poten potential is differently there, but it's not ideal. So will Nitro Nine ban out that Enigma or will they ban out something uh, different? I mean, they still have to find a mid lane hero. Having said that, Queen of Pain is one of those heroes that can do well against basically every single mid lane hero. So we might not see. Um, a mid lane being banned out. It's going to be another one of those heroes that can land their stuns together with the Shadow Demon uh, disruptions. It's going to be Lina that's get banned out there, just in case they don't want to be dealing with that one. Do they then have to deal with a uh, Enigma? Is the question. That is the question. Ooh, there we go. What's this? Ten seconds remaining. Well, let's see what I see Cup is uh, going to be picking up. They still have all their time in their bonus time though. So they don't really need to rush it if they want if they if they uh, wanted to. Taking their time. I mean, they have got everything still open, basically. They could go for jungle hero still. They could go for a support still. They could go for... I mean, they could, in theory, go for dark steer mid and go for a different offline hero, but... No, I mean, Oi, I'm Shadow it's gonna be a support. Shadow Shaman, another hero Wait, that team. is very annoying against an anti-mage because there's so much disable. Now, having said that, I do realize that... Once you have a BKB, that Shadow Shaman is gonna be completely useless. Well, not completely. You can still push with those words, but... You know, you have to take that into account that Shadow Shaman is easily countable with just one item. But normally, anti mages they don't really want to build BKBs. They want to build Battle Fury and then Manta Style and then Heart, you know, Butterfly, those kind of things. But now he's basically being forced in buying a BKB at some point of the game. To be fair, though, if you're up against a Phantom Lancer, you might want a BKB regardless. Windrunner, Windrunner being picked up by Natural Knight, so that's going to be their offlane. No surprise, we've seen them picking it up uh, previous game as well that we saw of, of them today. We're gonna see what Icy Cup wants to pick up next. It's still their mid lane hero that they're gonna have to think of. Tem uh, yeah, Templar Assassin is still in the pool. Could be a nice hero up against Queen of Pain. It's not ideal, but then again, nothing is really ideal against the Queen of Pain. You just want a safe mid lane hero. Maybe even something like a. Uh, wow, that was not what I was waiting. I was oh, wow. Are we gonna see a Shadow Shaman mid? I would love to see a Shadow Shaman mid. Oh, I love Shadow Shaman's mid. Please, please go for Shadow Shaman mid. I mean, in theory, Jakiro, Shadow Demon, Darkseer, we've all seen them mid before, but I like Shadow Shaman mid more. So let's hope for that one. Uh, but we're gonna first see the last pickup for Natural 9. They still need uh, either a jungle hero or something that is gonna be um, supporting the Rubik and the anti mates as well. Could go for some team fight potential if they want to pick up a Tidehunter or something for that secondary support role. Or if they want to go for an Enigma and team fight and jungle, it's all, it's all possible. And they're going into their last 15 seconds that they have. Ten seconds remaining. Is it team fight? Is it support? What is it? We still actually have the Wisp in. I don't think they're going to be picking up the Wisp, but I think that's the first time today that I've seen him go through Sand, Sand King. So it's going to be secondary support and it's going to be team fight, but it's not going to be an Enigma, not going to be a Tide Hunter. It's going to be a Sand King. So that's going to be uh, there. I do believe, by the way, Sand King's teeth look the same as Shadow Demon's teeth about ish. Well, even though Sand King has a bit more of an overbite. Just saying, that, that one's that one's uh, got my attention. Anyway, doesn't matter. We're gonna see who's gonna be playing what, so we're gonna be seeing who is gonna go mid. Oh, looks like we're gonna see Darkseer go mid, and then we're just gonna see one lane being kept entirely open, unless we're gonna have an off lane Shadow Shaman or sh 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 safe lane Shadow Shaman, and then having a Shadow Demon Jakiro Phantom Lancer aggressive trial lane. It's not really ideal, but they can use it to try and shut down that anti-mage, but we'll see uh, sooner or later. We're gonna go towards Natural 9 first, see who's playing what. 
We've got Shatan playing the Queen of Pain. Goldock will be playing the Sand King. It will be Tim playing the Rubik, in case you're wondering why I know that I pronounce that as Tim. I've been told that his name is Tim, so I can call him that. So we're gonna have Risk playing the Windrunner once more. It's gonna be Harakun on his Anti-Mage, as we've seen him playing it today earlier as well. And that is the entire lineup of Natural 9. Now let's see what we can expect from IC Cup. We have J4, still looking to go towards a bottom lane, so that's good. Because, uh, you know, that means more more chance for Shadow Shaman mid. We've got him playing the Dark Seer. Fox will be playing the Jikiro, we'll be warding a bit there. And we'll probably be rotating towards the mid lane. Looks like we are indeed gonna see sunlight on his Shadow Shaman mid. I love it. I really do, I really do. We have Weeja Zik playing the Shadow Sh Shadow Demon. Oh my god, I'm gonna be tripping over words with that. Shadow Demon, Shadow Shaman. Just saying, it will happen. Seconds to I'm battle. human. Uh, we're gonna be seeing Jackal playing the Phantom Lancer. No real surprise there. He plays the carry for his team, picked up and a shield and Equalium Blade, and also got some pool uh, regens there. So we'll be uh, on a top lane, on a tri lane. We'll be very safe there and we'll be just fine. I mean, Shadow Shaman, Jakiro are very popular combination. Um, they used to be more popular when the sh when the uh, Jakiro Ice Path was still doing a lot more damage than it does now, but they are still very popular. I mean, Disruption will guarantee that Ice Path to hit and you can just go very aggressive and they might actually be trying to look for something here as Risk uh, sees him, of course, from the high ground. Double damage from being picked up by Jackal will allow him to last hit a bit more safe there as we do see bottom lane Anti-Mage together with the Sand King. Rubik actually being in the mid lane gonna be pulling and stacking and you were doing the whole uh, this to this thing, as you know what I mean. Uh, or maybe not, maybe he's just gonna rotate. Tim, what are you doing? No, he's just gonna try lane. Okay, well that's my theory gone. Doesn't matter, when are we going top? I'm not sure if she should be going top though. I mean, that's pretty damn rough to be there with the, um, with the uh, Jakiro and the Shadow Demon being there. And she's actually going to be uh, stacking the ancients. Yeah, this is something that you can do with Windrunner. Uh, she has a very decent range, so you can just stack the camp continuously and just try to, to kill off the ancients. And, I mean, it's not farming as much as... Uh, it's not going as fast as being on a lane or something, but it's something that you can do if you know that you can't do anything on a lane anyway, which is the case in this case for Risk. So he's going to be able to do just that. Look at that. That's already... Uh, I mean, that's a small, that's a small thing, but a uh, small uh, wizard, but he's going to be able to do that anyway continuously just pull them and um, get them back in the meantime I think this is gonna be the lane where we're gonna see first blood because as much as I love Shadow Shaman mid he does need a lot and Queen of Pain is definitely one of the more harder off lane uh, mid lanes to be up against right here especially if you're a Shadow Shaman he is of course going for that fast bottle and he will use his ether shock to get those last hits because his real base damage is not that high and his last hit animation is not that great especially not compared to a Queen of Pain um, and he needs he needs those uh, those creeps anyway, so he must might as well guarantee them with those with that ether shock. So he has got his his bottle, and maybe with that he will be a bit more secure. As we do see the harassment to paying its uh, toll to Shatan, he actually has to use himself. No more regen for him. Almost got his bottle himself, but being slightly behind sunlight right now with that bottle is the flying courier is already on the way there, and that Shadow Shaman being totally out of mana. And this is gonna be trouble. Sunlight being harassed towards the tower. Shatan still has a scream though, but is not gonna be able to get that kill. He knows it too. And it's, this will mean that he will use the bottle entirely empty, probably, and then gonna send it back. Unless he's just gonna put the bottle back. Unless he's gonna get lucky with a rune. And it's he is. Fox uh, guarding it for him. And he will be using the entire bottle and get himself an invis rune. So great uh, stuff for him there. And good support saving that rune for him. And Shatan getting some free last hits on this, um, on this mid lane, though. Oh, awkward scream. That was an awkward scream, I think. Oh, well. Oh well, he probably saw, yeah he saw the um, he saw the invisibility room, so thinking he was having um, sunlight standing next to him, which wasn't the case. So in that sense, it, it makes it a bit less awkward. Uh, so we uh, let awkward scream. So we do have J4. He got forced back all the way back to base. He didn't die, but it did get forced back, and he's actually gonna go into the jungle right now because he knows he can't do anything on the bottom lane anymore. He's doing the same thing basically. Uh, of uh, as the wind turner, not attacking the ancients, but I mean like doing something else rather than going on that lane. And looks like Windrunner knows that the lane is gonna get pushed out, so she's gonna get ready to get the experience that comes her way when the when she's standing next to her tower. As we have got supports being smoked up, we have a burrow strike ready together with the telekinesis level one and level two, and we're gonna see them trying to go for something, maybe trying to go for the top lane or just roam around and go around and get sunlight instead. When it do well, bleh. even though he knows that there's two supports missing, he should yeah he's gonna be running away, but I don't think he's gonna be able to shadow strike hits. Can they get a burrow strike in sunlight? 
trying to hide. Two is going into chicken. Either shock as well, but that's a burst strike going through, and that is sunlight. Ooh, still alive for now. Has got bottle charge as well, and we'll be able to stay alive. And that is him almost oh, getting the thanks. first blood up on Godot. Tower helping out as well. And that gang failed, but Sunlight being very happy with that. In the meantime, Jackal, free farm. Double damage. I mean, we can look at Jackal, say he's free farming. Great. 26 for 27 for 4. But we also look at the anti-mates. Free from. Great. 27 for 9. So they're Down very even here. On the last hit. Uh, no. No. So that's still sunlight going down. Shadow Shamans. That's the blood puddle that he was. But Queen of Pain still getting it. Level 5 actually. So slight over extension from Jackal. We did see him emptying his bottle. He couldn't get it anymore. And he just died for staying around there too long. After that gank he should have backed off. Uh, he comes back instantly though, TP's, uh, TP's directly to the lane, doesn't want to miss any last hits, doesn't want to miss any experience, more importantly, he needs that ward, he needs those wards, he needs those levels uh, to make a big impact and to also have got some control over the anti-mage when the anti-mage reaches uh, those dangerous levels before he has a BKB. As, um, yeah, more illusions being created from the Phantom Lancer to create more illusions, that's what I said, you can just continue to do that, it's great. As we do have... Uh, no. Level 6 now up on the Queen of Pain. The second time I missed the first lot today. Out of the 6 matches, that's not good. Radiant's top tower is Sniff. under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Fortification going out. Fortification of the Dire is still not used though. But it is gonna get pushed here, this tower, and the new creeper will come in, but it's gonna continuously be pushed and with the Phantom Lancer it just goes really fast. At the same time, in theory, Antimage pushing by himself without a man style doesn't go that fast, but since there's actually nobody there, he might as well be able to be pushed fa fairly fast, and he's indeed going to be uh, doing just that. Having his ring of health Dyer's up, having his uh, poor man's shield attack. is doing just fine. We do have J4 coming back now towards the bottom lane. If we have another gank going up on Sunlight, turns Shetan into a chicken and has to run away. But there's still Burst like and a stream, and a power shot, and a kill. Going kill. away of Queen of Pain, second the kill of the game. Same target, same, same killer, same murderer, same victim. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. In the meantime, Antimage just said, uh, yeah, it's gonna try to get the last hit here. Should be able to get that. First tower going down. As that's probably gonna be the second one on the top lane there as the Lucian's coming in. Uh, never mind. They're gonna be pulling the creep wave. That's not gonna work out. Boots there Radiant's from Sunlight, so he'll have those attack. when the crew brings them to them. He wish I bet he wishes he had him right now because he's walking very slowly towards the tower again as Fox now coming to help out in the mid lane. Queen of Pain definitely winning your mid lane here. Last hits alone already 28 for 9 with Shadow Shaman being 19 for 10. But more importantly those two kills make a big difference. Especially in experience and I mean Shadow Shaman will be having some troubles right now and he, he needs that level 6 like I said. He needs those those wards up and those levels up on those disables as um we're gonna see Antimage, I mean he's just continuing to farm. This is dangerous though, I mean... You have got a Phantom that's a farming, free farming against a Antimage free farming. Now the thing about an Antimage is that when he gets his starting items up, he'll be able to farm much faster than a Phantom Lancer can. So it's, um, uh, it's, it's, I don't know how that's gonna go. It's actually quite interesting. I don't think, we, I don't think we've seen this before, or at least I haven't. Not a free farming something against a free farming of, of the other thing and then, you know, seeing how it goes. As um, we have got some still level five. Fox just still hanging around there. Gonna go for Shatan the moment he, if he te if he blinks in. I mean it's nighttime. He doesn't see Fox right there. But if he blinks in, there's gonna be an ice path. <laughs> Three uh, bottle charges still in there. Two for the Queen of Pain, so she's not in any danger just yet either. As we do have a rotation for smoke targets going towards the top lane. J4 is backing off though, and they do realize that they've got this ward here, so they see exactly where they're going and are now gonna find a different target. This is Tag Team 101. They want to get those kills. They already arranged two, well, one and a half, I guess. I mean, that first time that they tried to gank Sunlight in mid, it didn't work out, but in the end, that HP that they got off him still helped out for Shatan to uh, kill him off later since Sunlight didn't back off. But uh, they're gonna try to get another one. They're gonna try to go for uh, for J4 right here. Surge gonna go up. Here comes Godot though. Burlside hits. And there's the telekinesis as well. And here comes Heracoon. And he's gonna try to TP out. Won't be able to do so because the mana void is there. And it is actually Sand King that picked up the kill. And that is the third kill going the way of Natural 9. He's thrown up on Shadow Demon. Was it the... Yeah, nothing, that was nothing. Ether Struck doing a lot of damage to Shitan here. The, vo the ward, of course, helping out. It is night time, so she shouldn't be visible otherwise. Now she knows that there's a ward, though. 
And as does Rubik, of course. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And they now know. There we go. Exactly what I said. But yeah, that's the danger of that ether shock. It just hits targets in front of you, even if you don't want them to know that you see them. Whoa. Anti-mage able to blink away from that one. Gonna get ganked up by the... Uh, well, not really gank. It was more like J4 getting helped out by Fox on his Jukiro. They know that with the two of them they cannot kill the anti-mage, so... They just do what they can to force him back and to make sure that that tower is gonna stick around for a little while longer, even though it's getting a bit of harassment already. No! Smoke! There we go. Are oh, they gonna go for the anti-mage now? I'm curious if they can get him, though. I mean, they have got, of course, those disables. Surge up for the Hex. There we go. Shackle next. Ice Path to follow up. Soul Catcher on there as well. And they should be able to get him. I like it. I like it. Strike you down, Jakiro says, because he was the one that got the kill. Nice. And a sentry ward, because he started running before, of course, they they, uh, they came. Oh, that's true, actually. They just realized it was there. Because otherwise he wouldn't be out that far, I guess. Can't be that careless if you don't know that what's coming for you. But then again, that was, that was a successful smoke. I mean, they used four heroes on that, yeah. But that's worth it. That's definitely worth it. Let's see if they can get another one. Uh, Shatan will be, of course, able to blink away. Unless we just stick and get uh, something off there, but... No can do! No can do! Continuing to keep pressure on, though, with three heroes being here. They want to get this tower. The tower will go down, no deny. And it's actually the siege creep that picks up the last hit. We just did going back to base because he's totally out of mana. It's not worth anything right now anyway, and it's not worth it just sitting around there waiting for his mana to get back up. Might as well walk back and forth if you're not going to do anything in the meantime anyway. In the meantime, Phantom Lancer. Vladimir's offering, complete. So we'll be able to uh, to just life suit and just, I mean, I'm really curious how this is going to go against this guy. He's still building towards his Battle Fury, of course. I mean, Antimage wants to go for Battle Fury, Power Treads. Great, and then he's going to farm fast. Super fast, even. Oh, and I will also... When, when that happens, we do see Phantom Lancer being way higher on that worth, but that's because this is in the courier for the Antimage right now, and that's actually uh, not for the Antimage. This is only for the Antimage. Ultimate Orb for the Queen of Pain. Sand King, why are you so low? Bottom tower is under attack. But yeah, Ultimate Orb for the Queen of Pain, so they want to go for Sheepstick to, to try and get some more um, control for themselves. I mean, they have control for against them, so they want some control for them as well. And that's a Battle Fury ready. The thing about a Battle Fury is, though, it, it just gets its value when you get those power treads up. Right now, you can tell he's just not attacking fast enough for it to be really worth it, because he's taking a lot of damage this way. But we st we're still gonna see this, actually. Wait a second. Gold per minute. 466 on the Anti-Mage. 436 on the Phantom Lancer, but we're gonna see Antimage spiking up ahead soon, especially if he's gonna be getting his power treads. He's being very careful though, there's people missing from the map and he doesn't want to get caught out. He knows that they know that he's probably farming the jungle if he's not on any lane. It's the only logical solution, so... We're gonna be uh, very careful here. He does have uh, well, he does not have a ward, so he's totally blind inside his own jungle. He realizes that he's t well, he is just completely relying on his um, shackle, um, on his uh, sorry, on his blink. Uh, there's gonna be a shackle. That's what I was gonna say. Shatan will try to blink away though. We'll be able to do so. Ether shock still hitting, and they might be able to get him still. Yeah, there goes the demonic purge, ending it. We just stick picking up the kill. And um, yeah, that's gonna be anti mage. Just continuing to, to farm. I mean, he has got almost got his uh, power treads ready, so we'll be able to buy that on the side shop. Probably gonna be his aim, as these four are, of course, again, smoked up Dyer's to go try and find the anti -mage. In the meantime, on the top lane, they're gonna try to find Jackal. The Doppelwalk is on there. Uh, the Dust is also on there, but they can't chase him. There's not enough people there, and that's something that IC Cop is doing good. They are making sure that there's... There's just, I mean, it's better to have too many heroes appointed to killing the anti than too little. Oh, they find him. They know he's there. They're gonna try to find him. Need that hex. Need that hex. There's the hex. There's the ice bat as well. And the wards. And the shackle. Ice bat misses, but there is still Macropire dual breath. He blinks towards the low ground. Now, is it gonna be enough? Demonic purge again. 
Telekinesis puts Jakiro up on the high ground and he just uses Macropire, can't do anything apart from landing ice paths. Has his team of course right by him, by his side, I was gonna say, until he got left alone by his teammates. That's quite sad. He's being left to his eyes, he's, he's being left to die. Okay, that was awkward. But it, I mean, in reality, there's really nothing that they could have done. They can't really force staff him because they don't have a force staff. There's nothing they can ha they have that clears out trees. Macropire being the only thing, so, you know. He didn't have a TP, so that was quite sad. And they couldn't give him a TP. So that is still uh, gonna be one for one, but then again, it's an anti-mage. It's worth dying for, that's okay. And of course, that was a failed gank up on the uh, Phantom Lancer, but a successful gank a second time on the anti-mage. It's a big difference. And he is further away from his power tread. The uh, Phantom Lancer being higher up on there right now. As the Phantom Lancer is also farming those, that jungle. With those illusions, Jackal is going to be uh, able to get his farm up as well. I mean, it's not the same as an anti-mage. Don't get me wrong. Anti-mage will still farm faster. But, you know. Can't have it all. And if those ganks are gonna be continuous to, to be successful, that Phantom, uh, sorry, that yeah, the Phantom Lancer will continue to be to be ahead of the Anti Mage. But as you can see, Gulp a minute is already uh, going back towards the Anti Mage as soon as he's back on the lane. Thirty one hundred gold upon the Phantom Lancer. He's probably gonna go for Radiance by the looks of it. Otherwise, he would have already bought something else. I mean, there's a lot of different builds for Phantom Lancers. Going for the Fusal Blades, going for Manta Styles. You can go for everything basically. As, uh, we have a uh, Shackle up on the Winged Runner, but I don't think that's going to be helping out Sunlight. He has to back off. Nice Ice Path still though, but Shackle will not let Sunlight. Can he get himself away? I don't think so. He's totally out of position. Power Shot goes through. Burrow Strike will finish the job and Gold up picks up the kill. Haha, <laughs> 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 indeed. We're going to have uh, Antimage farming. Surprise! What's in the Courier though? Ooh, Disruption. And that's still Power Treads being complete. And it was we just sick finding out. Oh wait a second, I'm here by myself, and that's still the fusible blade by the. Um, oh wait a second, oh that's just himself being chased down by by the power shot. But yeah, we still got a fusible blade on the phantom lancer. So he bought that just off the bat. He's got the gold for it, and he just decided to buy it all at one go. As he is gonna go for Shatan, but Shatan blinks himself away. I mean, that's gonna be something that's gonna be really annoying at some point. Even if anti mage is gonna get really tanky, etc. He will still have his mana being burned away from the Phantom Lancer, and then he can't blink away. And that's this thing that he relies on. He needs to be able to blink away. It's just his, uh, his, his thing. Blink away, blink back in, blink away, blink back in. Or just, you know, be safe, blink away. But if you can't, it's gonna be a big, tr big problem for him, as we do see Sunlight. I mean, the Shadow Shaman, he is, was nice mid. Not that great of a time. He, hasn't, he has been in all three kills that they have done so far. And I did say that this game is gonna be lasting long. It's gonna be, it's gonna be big. I mean, big. Yeah, hopefully, big team fights at some point when they when they find when they both think they're ready to fight and both think they have the same uh, chances of winning or at least a better chance of winning. But uh, before that happens, we're gonna see either ganks to try and stop down the carry from farming, or we're gonna see them just farming. Which indeed, as Radius someone as the chat says, uh, Yon, yeah, it's not that interesting to see. Uh, though we do have to have to just keep watching this. Phantom Lancer picks up the ages. I mean, it looks like we are gonna see Icy Cup being a bit more aggressive before we're gonna see Netro 9 being a bit more aggressive. We do have the tower going down here now. Anti Mage actually coming in here to help out as well. The levels are gonna be going the way of uh, oh yeah of um, Netro 9. Not by that much though, and it's it's both very even. But the gold is in favor of Netro 9, especially with this tower. And of course, all the other tier 1 towers being down on the side of IC Cup, so that was the last one. We do have the fortification now going off for the Radiant side as well. There looks like they're gonna trade a tier 1 for a tier 2 though. And it looks like with the Anti Mage having the Battle Fury as well as the Power Threads, they think, you know what, we're gonna fight this already. Because we don't think that your opponent can. But they're just, um. Yeah, they're tra they're exchanging towers right now, and this is not this is not good if they change their tier two. There's no fortification for IC Cup. They're gonna try to fight this though. They're gonna come in from the side. Phantom Lancer on the bottom lane picks up his own tier two tower. So two towers for two towers. So not that bad, but still tier two go going down. And I mean, in theory, it's not that bad. You know, same amount of gold, etc. But the thing is that uh, the the brute mother effect for anti mage and Phantom Lancer is both there. So that's mean, uh, that means that, you know, if you're comfortable with having the anti-mage farming, and at some point Icy Cup is comfortable. I mean, they know he's farming. It's just a given. 
So the question is, do they want to deploy heroes to stop him from farming or not? And normally that's going to be not, and when they do, they're going to be having a lot of heroes there, as we do have... Oh, no, that's nothing. That's nothing. Um, but this is also br th this Broodmother effect from Jackal. They know he's farming. They know they can't probably kill him, but you know they don't. So they don't want to really want to put someone on the lane there and rather get their advantage elsewhere. But the thing that you have to worry for now on the side of Icy Cup is that when Anti Mage pushes top, he's gonna be pushing into the tier three towers, and that is very dangerous, as uh, of course they're very close to barracks, etc. So the same thing goes for uh, for Icy Cup, but they have still got the two tier tier two towers to go through. But you know that's something that you have to keep in mind. We do have got Phantom Lines are picking up a Yasha, so it's gonna go for. Uh, for the Mantis style. As there's a lot of hero heroes bottom, it looks like Icy Cup is actually looking for a fight. Um, there instead Metro 9 thinks, you know what, we don't want to fight. We'll just take your tier 2. Instead, you can have ours instead also. So that's okay. But I do think they have to probably or they oh yeah, they're either gonna defend that and fight it. Or they're going to be forced back towards their own tier 3. And it looks like Risk is gonna, just going to sit there just in case. But they are going to defend their tier 2. And they are going to be finding uh, the Antimage who blinks away. Gets the Lance still in his face. Turns around and, and hits it and kills it. But, you know, that's still a tier 2 tower staying alive. So that trade didn't really work out. They had to leave their tier 2, or, tier two tower alone. So right now we feel that we're in the situation where I seek up things that they can take a fight. They, they, they just looked for a fight. And we saw Natural 9 purposely... Not going for that fight, rather going for the split push. And therefore forcing out some TPs for my C Cup. So that is a big difference right now. As we do have Sunlight's Ward still up, which we only oh, have seen a couple of times, but not by that much actually. The Netro 9, they're, they're a bit more careful. They're making sure that they're on the other side of the map as where uh, I C Cup is and are just banking on uh, on anti-mage on farming and he is also going for Manta style picked up a yasha for himself so we're gonna just keep eye an eye on those two carries and see how they fire and of course what everybody says the later you get into the game the more important those supports are gonna be so let's take a look at the supports and what they can actually bring to the table we have got team fight potential from that sand king the epicenter should not be underestimated especially not if you're up against a phantom lancer because the illusions will of course be taking a lot of damage from that as well so you will be able to find out easier which one is uh, is a real one? At the same time, you have got those power shots. Windrunner making a, a good semi carry. Same thing goes for Rubik. The supports for Natural Knight are very usable in that uh, in that late game. Also, as we have got tier one towers being picked up, we still have Icy Cup thinking, you know what? You can either fight us or we take your tower. And Natural Knight says, okay, take a tower, and they go for their own tower, going for the split push. But they lose their tier 2 tower by themselves as well. So it's now towers even again. Unless Natural 9 manages to take this tower, which is what Anti Mage is doing already with that. But uh, Brute Mother effect, he will be getting forced back though. He does get the tower, but in the meantime, there is a no fortification up on the side of. Oh, Sunlight Trouble, Sonic Wave going through. I spent already there, Risk getting in trouble as well. Macropire going through as well. In the meantime, Wards up on Wards. That's a Rubik for you. But they're still got being focused on the tower. Tier 3 tower still going down. Rubik still going down. Shatan. Aegis popping. We're gonna see Jackal. Trouble. Epicenter helping out. Jackal taking a lot of damage here. Disruption will try to save his life, but will it be enough? I don't think so. The dust is on there. He's running. Those wards though. Antimage picking up the last hit still as the tower is on the in the night range if they want to try for, to go for a TP out. From the Dark Seer, Fox gonna try to do the same, but go up from the side with the Burrow side gets him and Anti Mage to pick, pick up the kill. So double kill going the way of the Anti Mage. And the tower still dies though. So sentry Ward, uh, Sentry Ward, I mean the um, tickle Siege Creep doing the work. I can draw perfect circles. But that's one tower down. And I mean, yeah, you lost your carry for it, but that was the first time that the Phantom Lancer died. So it's not that bad, though we do look at the gold and it is a big difference as. Um, yeah, there's there's now 3k difference in gold, and we do have to look at that. I mean, this is just anti-mage. He, of course, got that tower hit of, uh, as well on the, on the bottom lane. The tier 2 tower that dropped was his gold. But this is a big difference in gold per minute, and this is why anti-mage is considered the hardest farmer. As soon as he's got those power treads, he's got that battle fury, he's gonna farm like a beast. And he just does that. It's just anti-mage. As we do have... Uh, the force, or sorry, the Aghanim's almost up on the Dark Seer. He will be able to make copies of Anti Mage. The same thing goes for the Dark, for the Shadow Demon. So, if we're again talking about how supports are gonna be, or how the other heroes are gonna be having an influence in the late game, quite big influence. Dark Seer's wall is great against that Anti Mage. If you get a copy on him, it's insane to have that against your opponents. Shadow Demon's illusions uh, as well for the, that that disruption. 
So it definitely helps out. Shadow Shaman, however, I mean, it's, it's nice to have him, but he's fairly squishy. That's why he's going for that BKB. And, I mean, if there's going to be heroes that pick up a BKB himself, themselves, he's going to be useless. So uh, we're going to see how he's going to be working out there. As uh, we're going to have, of course, I mean, the Jakiro, we've seen him so much in, in late games earlier on that we know how important he is in those fights and we know that he can be great with that ice path with that macro pyre if perfectly aimed gonna be having a lot of influence and of course also against those um illusions from the anti-mage if he gets his mantis now up gonna be great but uh, you know both teams have got their own perks shackle not to be underestimated didn't even mention that i mean great tool for team fight control but that it all has to get together. I mean, previous fight, it was a bit forced for my C cup, so they were at a disadvantage to begin with. Then they were fighting up the high ground, so more disadvantage. Then they had, I mean, they were just focusing on towers, so they, they didn't really focus on picking off heroes. You know, they lost that fight, but I wouldn't say that because of they had the, the worst team fight. No, it was just, I mean, okay, Phantom Lancer was also slightly overextending because he was just on the wrong side of the game, uh, wrong side of the fence of the, uh, of the tower, but... I mean, it's it, it wasn't something that is bad play. Do you hear a beep or is it just in my ears? I think it's just in my ears. Damn it, I got a beep in my ears. Oh well. Let's take a, take a look at the gold graph. Five game favor of natural nine. Again, doesn't say anything. We can't, we can't look at this. Okay, I'm making you look at it, but you know, we can't. We have all scores also got the experience graph. With that last team fight, getting that experience up to, to 5k or well, even I would almost say 7k in favor of natural 9. Uh, just by getting that anti mage uh, a couple I of kills. From the slow. And that is just. I mean, it's it's a big difference, yes. Especially now that the anti mage is level 19. That's also where a lot of the difference comes from. I mean, this anti mage is just. He's anti mage. Heracoon is having the f time of his life. Well, Phantom Lancer's trying to do what he can to keep up, but he's a Phantom Lancer and the other guy is an anti-mage. It's difficult to do. Then again, anything can happen in a teamfight depending on who is orchestrating it and how things are going to go. And that's something that is going to be the most important thing. Captaining. It's going to come down to that. Oh, hey, one thing that I haven't done yet this game, and I will do that right now because I know that you want to see that. Typing twice ping, where you can see the pings of all teams. We have, of course, got a... Um, Australian team and we've got a um, Russian team as we do have about the same ping a slightly higher for natural nine though But they are used to playing on that. So let's just uh, call it a day call it even well not call it a day But call it slightly even as I seek up probably not as used to playing with uh, with the delay It's it, I mean it's a stupid comparison. I know but you know it, it does help if you practice with playing on on this delay playing on this uh, on, with this uh, ping Let's see if they're gonna be going for something. We see them roaming around a lot. At this point, the supports from uh, from Natural 9 are farming a lot more than the supports of IC Cup. They might try to go for a smoke here, though, as the courier comes in, so we're gonna see them maybe trying to go for that as they are all four in this middle lane. Fox has to join, though, if they want to go for that smoke. They don't have the smoke. No smoke. Just waiting. I mean, it's... Oh, God. It's just it's just waiting for the anti major for the Phantom Lancer to be, to be high enough. Risky business, anti mage. You could he could have just blinked in towards uh, towards the Phantom Lancer. It's dangerous. Real Phantom Lancer is on the bottom lane, and he's being supported as well. I mean, it's the same thing. They're just walking around the anti mage, and there they go. And he gets Hicks. He jumps right into there, and that's gonna be a kill. And he buys back. I mean, that's big. That's a great smoke coming off from IC Cup. Jackal just standing there, killing stuff. Antimage blinks himself into five heroes and finds death. And that that could be a Roshan. Were it not that Antimage actually bought back, so that could be turning into uh to a team fight. Smoke is up. Sentry ward is there though, they know exactly what's going on. Ice path. So it's gonna be there. Vacuum into that as well. As we have got J4 being turned into a piglet. Sonic Wave going through. BKB is activated. And that is gonna be Darkseer still dropping. It is Phantom Lancer dropping. Sunlight dropping. Triple kill going the way of Harakun. That's a team wipe. And the only one that's even slightly close to dying is uh, that Sand King. And we see exclamation marks all over the map. The pinging goes on. Because they were fighting at two different locations. The ice path was right. Okay, I cannot draw on the in the, on the river. That's a shame. 
and the vacuum was into there, and that's, I mean, it just wasn't, it wasn't orchestrated. And that's the Aegis, and that is the Aegis up on the Antimage, so if he dies again, he is back up even without buying back. And that's gonna be a tier 3 tower going down, because everybody on IC Cup is dead. And this could be it even, nah, I don't think so actually, they're gonna back off before then, but look at this. If they take another fight right now, they will be... They will probably be losing more than just barracks, so I'm not sure if they're actually gonna try to take a fight. Ice Pass goes through. They can't afford to lose a fight. In the meantime, the Rome barracks are gonna get arrested by a couple of creeps. But their ranged bar melee barracks still go down. Let's see if they can get the anti mage here. Shackled. They need more damage. There's no fountain left just yet, though. Nice burst strike from Godot. It's a nice shackle, indeed. And they're gonna be backing off with the melee barracks and lose and well, keeping their own. Because Rubik TP there to help out. He's got 3,100 gold. We got an Aghanims completed up on the dark sea, but it didn't save them. It was just our, it was just not there. I mean, they have got Ice Path, Macropire, Vacuum into that, and then a dar dark sea wall, and you know, everything AoE ish. A Shadow Shaman Ether Shock should not be underestimated. But they couldn't get it. Couldn't get it. And of course, Phantom Lancer died fairly fast in that fight, also. Of course, he got focused down. Let me try to take down and say the last tier tower standing on the map. Fortification actually goes out for that. They might try to fight this. They can't lose the fight right now. I see Cop is in no position to afford a loss of a team fight, especially not since the anime still got the ages. And they're gonna try to find Fox. They will be able to do so. There's the hacks and the Shikiro going down. Queen of Pain, of course, also has a gem of true sight. Let's see if we can find some other new items. We've got the mechanism, we've got the four staff. No real surprise there upon this wind runner. Goes for Mana, boot, mana Boots again. A risk uh, we saw that him doing that earlier as well. With Godot having a blink dagger now and 1400 gold. Rubik picking himself up a four staff with all the gold that he had. Sunlight gonna be going down here. One more hit away from dying. Bam! You're dead. Shitan getting a killing spree and 4300 gold. Uh, let's see, San we already saw, yeah, we now saw everybody up on the Radiant side with 5,900 gold up on the anti mage. Let's see the other side then, let's see what this Phantom Lancer has built. We have him, get have him, yeah, we have him, having him, his Manta style. He's also going for a heart and he finds anti mage. This time he doesn't have a team to back him up and he is gonna get ganked, or at least that's what the plan of Shaitan is. He's got the gem of true sight, but he is being clever and he's TPing out the safety towards this team. We already saw the mechanism in the Agonims. Fox has got himself a Ghost Scepter to be able to stay alive against that anti mage should he find him. Four staff also up on the Shadow Demon. And we have Shadow Shaman of course. He has got that BKB and Mana Boots. That's it. Um, they're gonna go for the second uh, second round. Disruption there. Bit of awkward disruption but that's making illusions of anti mage forcing him to back off. Trying to burn away some of the mana of some of the people there. They're forcing them back with the lances and with the disruption illusions. But they are not gonna back off that easily. They have the ages, they have to use it, they want to use it. Nice ice path up on the anti mage again. More illusions. Illusions upon illusions. They're sticking around. I wonder if they're actually gonna try to go in with the next creep wave, because they can't stand here around you forever. And at some point, point we're probably gonna see anti mage just jumping in there and going for it. Or maybe four staff first from the Rubik and telekinesing on someone that he wants to go and take down. Disruption on the Antimage again though. Burst Strike. Epicenter being casted by Godot. Able to get it off. Gets turned into a chicken. Too late. Either shot goes through still though. And it's Sanking that goes down first. It is the Aegis that goes up from the Antimage. So he'll be back shortly. And um, he is surrounded by enemies. And he drops. And that is gonna be, okay, a bit overextension. He shouldn't have gone in at all. I mean, not that way anyways. That was a bit awkward and, I mean, perfect war trap also. A lot of disable coming off from IC Cup. They couldn't take it and they go down. Losing the anti -mage. At the same time though, their tier fours took a bit of damage. Actually, no, they didn't. Yeah, they did. This one took 12 damage. But it is, um... It is gonna be a fight when going to, to IC Cup. So as I said, everything can still happen, though at this point, Natural 9 seems a bit ahead. We've got 15... <laughs> a bit ahead. Haha. <laughs> We've got 15k gold in his favor. Experience graph, 20k. 
Uh, it was 15. Yeah, 15k. Okay. 20k experience in their favor. I mean, they've, they've just got the most kills and able to be uh, farming a bit more rather than just supporting their own carry the whole time. Like they're so, the supports are able to find a bit more farm. And more importantly, that anti mage is just getting way more than the Phantom Lancer is getting. It's just it's just that simple. Look at this gold per minute. Uh, we do have an experience per minute elsewhere also, right? Hmm. There we go. Experience per minute. Look at that difference. It's just insane. Anti-Mage level 23, Jackal level 19, 18, rather. Ooh. And that is something tough. What's Jackal doing? thought he was buying something. And look at this team, they're just af too afraid to go out, while the rest of oh, Natural 9, they're, they're actually just farming and taking care of their jungle. And they, can't, they don't really want to go into their own jungle, because they don't feel safe. 2700 gold upon the Windrunner right now. Doing an okay job. I mean, it's really kind of come down to those fights and those situations and who's going to go in where and how those team fights are orchestrated. I mean, that team fight for Roshan, I do think IC Cup did have a good chance to take that, but that just the coordination wasn't there. I mean, it just it just wasn't. Sand King picking up an Ogre Club. Could be going for BKB as well, just to make sure his, uh, his epicenter doesn't get cancelled. I mean, it almost got cancelled in the previous fight, right? With the, with the Shackle. The Shackle being slightly too late. Didn't matter though, he still died. As did the Anti-Mage. BKB now also up on the Queen of Pain. 1800 gold as well as... I mean, buybacks are gonna be a lot more important very soon. And let's see if they're gonna be able to find someone, because they are drawing on the minimap. But they are going to be forced back towards their own base soon. anti mage pushing in. Together with team. And they're going to maybe coming from the side. So you look on the minimap. That is a possibility. No. No. There's just bottom lane. Oh, Jackal. He's by himself. No teammate to help him out this time. Now he, he should know that the rest is around here. Though it's night time actually. He doesn't. They're waiting. Everybody's missing from the map. Safe thing, safest thing I see Cup can do is wait. Wait until they know where they are. And that's exactly what Natural 9 knows that they're gonna do. And this will mean that... I mean, they will stay in the base a bit longer until people are visible once more. And they smoke up, actually. Put down a sentry ward just in case. And they're gonna go from behind. And there's not the whole team here, though. It's just three. They're still gonna try to go for it. Illusion rune. This isn't. Oh, this could be bad. If they don't. If they react too fast. No! No! Ah, oh, you saw. They saw almost the ice path. Almost. Jakiro thought about it, then realized it was an illusion. Jekyll saving the day. And they're gonna go for Jackal. Burst like in. Dust as well, but there's the ice path and the disruption. A nice war trap again up on the anti mage. BKBs go on. Dark Seer will epicenter going through. Sunlight will be going down. Then there is a double kill for the anti mage already. What a not avoid. Ultra kill. Can he get a rampage? No! Sand King stole it. You were expecting sandy claws. Thank you for your contribution to the cast, Sand King. And that was a team wipe. And oh my god, what a messy fight was that for Ice Seeker. Everything got thrown up. Oh, I can't say messy fight. It was just anti mage just ripping through everything. Butterfly doing the works, and that's gonna be a GG, I feel like. Anti mage versus Phantom Lancer. Anti mage wins. Are oh, they gonna go? Yeah, there's a GG. Anti mage wins indeed. Phantom Lancer just not ready for it, just not having the same amount of farm speed that this anti mage has. It's just the insane amount of farm. It's, that's, that's what killed them. Can't take it. Had to shut down anti mage a couple more. Even with anti mage dying twice at the start of the game, it was not enough. So that means that I seek up is eliminated from uh, from the star ladder. As in, not gonna. Oh, anti mage. Maybe he can get a rampage this time. Double kill. He's got no mana left anymore. That's something. Oh, poor fox. Ah, kill still risk. But uh, that means Netro 9 is gonna be going to the Losers Bracket Small Finals tomorrow, which will be held at 5, by the way. Uh, we're gonna be back here tomorrow at 5 also, so uh, you can follow me. Uh, there's gonna be more English casters then as well. I do believe Toby was planning on casting some of the games as well. 
so uh, check that out if you want to. There's gonna be three games in total. Uh, no, well, it's just gonna be three matchups, let's put it that way. One best out of one, followed up by another best out of one. First, it's gonna, it's gonna be the loser, loser's bracket small finals, then the loser's bracket finals, and then it's gonna be the grand finals. And the grand finals is best out of three, the rest is all best out of one. So we're gonna have it, uh, at least four games tomorrow, maybe five, let's hope for five. I always like best out of threes that goes to a third game. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. And if you want to find out more about these brackets and how what these teams have been doing and how they got here and stuff, you can go to um, dota2.starletter.tv or just starletter.tv, whichever you prefer, it's all there. You can find out brackets there, the news post that's there. There's, by the way, if you, in case you say it's a Russian website, you can go and click on the English flag on the top right corner. You have every, everything in English. The Russian news is normally up a bit earlier than the, than the English ones, but the English news is still going to be up there shortly anyways. Um, my name's Shiver, by the way. If you want to support me, subscribe to my YouTube please, which is youtube.com slash shevergaming. You can also support me on Twitch by following me or by subscribing to me or by turning off adblock or by just saying thank you in the chat. That also helps uh, me with my um, mindset. And if you want to support me, you can also follow me on Twitter, which is, well, you don't have to, that, that's not really supporting me. That's just nice. I like followers, which is twitter.com slash shevergaming. Same thing goes for Facebook, though Facebook actually does kind of support me because, you know, sponsors are interested in that stuff. In case I want to get sponsors. So you can go to facebook.com slash shevergaming. Give me a like there. Anyways, thank you for watching. That was the sixth game of the day, I believe. Or maybe the fifth. I don't know. But my voice is kind of suffering. I'm hoping I'm going to have a voice still tomorrow. And I am uh, hoping for more good games tomorrow. Because we did have a lot of good games. Now this one was... I mean, it was fairly even. But it, it was not the most exciting game. I'm sorry. It just happens sometimes. We did have a lot of other exciting games today, though. And we're hoping to have more exciting games tomorrow. And I'm really looking forward to seeing PR play again because I'm really impressed by their play so far. They were very strong and uh, we're gonna see which uh, which team will be of course taking that one spot in Star Ladder Star Series because that's what all these teams are fighting for. Anyway, let me jump out of this game. I'll be right back. I'm not quite sure yet what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'm gonna see if my sister is still awake, which is probably not the case actually because I haven't seen her for a while in the chat. And um, I'm gonna see if I maybe can play some games, but we'll see. Anyways, be right back. Stick around. <laughs>